Hello, I'm Dr. Gabriel Lipschitz. I'm a board-certified vascular interventional radiologist, and I'm going to talk to you today about the prostate artery embolization procedure, which is a minimally invasive image-guided procedure that we use to treat enlarged prostates. So how is the prostate artery embolization procedure performed? Well, we make a two millimeter incision at the top of the groin in the common femoral artery, and we insert a very small catheter into the artery. The catheter looks like this. It's basically a very small hollow tube. You can see the size of it relative to my finger. It's quite small. And we use a wire basically to navigate our way through the arteries uh, in order to find the prostate arteries. And usually there's at least one prostate artery on either side of the pelvis. So these catheters are really cool because they're hollow and you can inject the particles through the catheter and we use those particles to, to block the, the blood flow. And you can also inject contrast. So um, uh, while navigating our way to the prostate arteries, we actually the, the inject the contrast through here. And that creates a map of the arteries that we can see on our screen. And then we can find our way into the correct vessels and treat those vessels. So during the procedure, you'll receive light sedation. Um, basically, you'll be uh, out of it. Um, you won't be completely asleep, but you'll be very comfortable. The procedure takes about an hour to an hour and a half. You may feel a little bit of warmth, and maybe a little bit of burning sensation as we inject contrast in order to find our way through the vessels, but usually it's a very comfortable procedure. So what happens after the procedure? After the procedure, as soon as we're done, we'll place a bandage over the access site in the groin area, and then we'll take you back to the recovery unit. And in the recovery unit, we'll give you something to drink, a little bite to eat. You'll basically hang out for an hour, uh, after that, we'll wheel you down to your car. You'll have to have someone drive you home because you'll have received some anesthesia. Um, but you're able to walk that same day and you're, you can do light chores and normal activity basically right away. What we do ask though is you don't do any heavy lifting or heavy exercise for a week. And that's in order to allow the access site and the artery to heal. So what's the recovery period like after the procedure? Basically, there's something called post-embolization syndrome, and essentially all men who have this procedure have post-embolization syndrome. And that involves burning with urination and increased urinary frequency. Basically, the expectation should be that all your symptoms are gonna get worse, unfortunately, for a few days up to a week after the procedure. But after a few days, usually things get better every day, and by the end of the week, uh, those side effects from the procedure are gone and you're back to kind of your normal baseline. Then by about two weeks, you probably start to notice there's some improvement. For some guys, that improvement takes a month, uh, but usually between a four to six week post-procedure time period is when you're gonna have really a lot of improvement and then things will continue to improve out to around three months after the procedure. And the goal is to get you from the moderate to severe symptom category down into the mild symptom category. So what are the complications of this procedure? As I mentioned before, a wonderful thing about this procedure is that it's very rare to have a severe complication. The most common complication is a urinary tract infection, which happens in about 3% of patients. Another complication uh, we should mention is non-target embolization. And that's when the particles that we inject into the prostate artery actually end up traveling through collateral vessels or connections between the prostate artery and going into an artery that feeds the bladder or the rectum or the penis and causing some injury to those organs. But that's an, a very rare thing to happen. Um, and if it does happen, usually the body just heals on its own um, and it's not much of an issue. Other complications that could potentially happen are uh, uh, injury to the vessels that we navigate our catheters through or bleeding from the access site in the leg. And again, those are uh, the risk of uh, non-target embolization, vascular injury, and bleeding are less than 1%. And that's about it. If you have any additional questions, I'll be seeing you later on uh, for a video visit or in person. I'll be happy to answer your questions at that time. Uh, I look forward to meeting you in person. And I really look forward to you having an excellent outcome and setting the clock back 20, 30 years. All right. Take care.